Mid-sized SUVs have been a hot commodity since the start of the new millennium. And now that we're in the 2020s, we're not seeing any signs of it slowing down. Now, what I have behind me is the Mitsubishi Montero Sport GT four-wheel drive. And if you remember, well, it took a while before it was launched here following the 4x2 models. So the question now is this, was it worth the wait? Now, it's been nearly a year, or by the time you watch this, over a year, since this new look Montero arrived. So we discussed the chiseled bumpers, the new LED fog lights and all that, the new wheels, and the chopped crying eye taillights. And to be fair, it looks almost like the GT 4x2 we tested months back. But there are very subtle hints for you to know the 4x4 from the 4x2. So first, you have the badge at the front. Now you may have noticed it's encased in this sort of plastic cover and that's because that is the radar for the adaptive cruise control and the automatic emergency braking and whatnot, which we'll get to later. Now another difference, you look below the license plate and you'll see a forward-facing camera. And one last difference are these. These are the headlight washers and it only comes with the 4x4 models. Now, speaking of 4x4 models, this is the only variant to come with a sunroof. So if you spot all those features, you're looking at a four-wheel drive Montero. For those who already own the 4x2 model, well, it'll be a very familiar sight in the GT4x4. Now, I've said this before about Mitsubishi that they have this knack of making hard plastic look and even feel premium. And the same applies for this top spec Montero Sport. Now, the tops of the door handle, that's hard plastic, but when you touch them, well, you think it's a more expensive material. Same goes for the dash. Now, from the doors, you do get padding in the lower half. So by your elbow, your elbow rests, and the grab handle, that's finished in leather. So I'm also happy that Mitsubishi included a grab handle to make it easier to climb in and out. Now on the left hand side, you'll see the mirror adjusters and the power fold button, the uh, forward collision mitigation button, the parking sonars and the stability control button. And also, curiously, they put the start button on the left hand side of the dash instead of the right hand side. And that's mainly because, well, there's really not a lot of space left to button button here. Now for the steering wheel, again, it's a familiar sight with the addition of one button. Now, this rectangular, well, trapezoidal looking thing activates the front camera, which we'll get to in a bit. And you also have the buttons for your adaptive cruise control. Now, in typical Mitsubishi fashion, the paddle shifters are finished in magnesium. Now, onto the instrument cluster, and it's a fully digital display. I'll do note that all the 4x2 also comes with a digital display aside from the 4x4, and you can even change the look of the instrument cluster simply by pressing left or right on the steering wheel controls. So you can do tachometer, speed, and fuel economy, or you can go for your speed priority and RPM priority. Now, this toggle here, that is your menu. So it shows your average fuel economy, average speed, your eco meter, and if your four wheel drive is engaged, and even your service advisor. Then we go down here, that's your audio controls. So your volume up and down is not down here, instead, it's a left and right toggle switch. And for your music, you press the musical note to change the mode or the source of your audio. So we now go to the center of the dash and what I notice is it's sort of like a waterfall design. It kind of takes up space but not too much that you're gonna feel cramped by the footwell but you are gonna notice that you know it's a bit on the bulky side. However I do like that Mitsubishi added 
this padding here because when you're going off-roading you're gonna find your knees flailing all over the place from time to time so instead of your knees hitting hard plastic at least you have this to lean on so infotainment screen is exactly the same as you'll get in the 4x2 and uh, we'll dig deeper in that later now your hazard controls are here and just a reminder your tailgate opener is here in the center and not on the left hand side of the dashboard automatic climate control is of course standard this is the top of the line model after all and it also comes with nano e which is the mitsubishi air filtration system now of course this is the 4x4 so there are more buttons to go around so you have your diff lock buttons right beside the USB ports. There are two USB ports, by the way, and one HDMI. And I'm glad that Mitsubishi didn't scrimp on these. So anyway, back to the buttons here. Um, you have your diff locks here, and towards the center, you have your four-wheel drive controls. So you have hill descent control and your rotary knob to engage four-wheel drive. You have two high, four high, four high lock and four low lock. And you have this curious button here, which is in the shape of an SUV with like rocks on top of it. So that shows you your off-road modes. That is the Super Select 2 four-wheel drive system. So it's sort of like terrain select. So you can just choose if you're on rocks, if you're on mud and ruts and stuff like that. All you have to do is press that button and the four-wheel drive system and the engine will adapt to whatever you need. Now, the Montero Sport comes with an electronic parking brake which is unusual in this segment, but you know, it's a novel feature nonetheless. And this is a fantastic feature, brake auto hold. Like, yes, some cars have it already, but it's nice to have it in an SUV like this. Now for the infotainment screen and options, it already has what you expect. It's got Bluetooth connectivity, HDMI, phone connectivity, navigation, and whatnot. And of course, this car comes standard with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Now, on the main screen, it's pretty clear, it's pretty legible, and it's one of the easiest to use. And also, it's actually fairly quick. And well, from what I experienced, it's not glitchy at all, so that's pretty good. And when you plug in your phone, of course, if you have an Apple phone, it'll show Apple CarPlay. If, it, if you have an Android, it'll show Android Auto. So in this case, we have an Apple phone and you can plug it in any of the USB ports here. And what you get is, well, in this case, Apple CarPlay. So simply press that and, well, that's pretty much what you get. And personally, I think Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are must-have features, especially in this vehicle segment because, well, not that it bypasses the entire infotainment system, but it's sort of more familiar because we hold our phones every day and whatnot. So having that familiar sight makes it well, much easier to use. And now for the seats, well, they're trimmed in leather, as you would expect in any top of the line SUV. And it's power adjustable for both driver and front passenger and have the, they have the same amount of adjustments. Now storage spaces, well, it kind of looks shallow, but it's actually pretty sizable. There's one below the USB ports and you have a sort of pass-through pocket down here and they also put a small slit down here maybe to put your cards parking tickets and well as I tested before your cell phone now and you have a pair of cup holders here in the center which is what you'd expect and the glove box comes with a tray and pretty deep pocket and well my personal favorite and I mentioned before that I'm a sucker for sunroofs this model comes standard with one. Granted, it's not the biggest in its class. Well, far from it, it's actually pretty small, but hey, a sunroof is a sunroof, and any opportunity to add more natural light into the cabin is a welcome choice. So that's the front of the Mitsubishi Montero Sport covered. Let's go to the second row seats. Now for the second row seats, well, space isn't a problem for the Montero Sport if we're talking about legroom and headroom. As you can see, there's a huge abundance of it. I can easily stretch my legs in it. And headroom, well, I can even lean back or sit up straight and I still have a fair amount. However, the Montero Sport is the smallest SUV in its segment. It's quite a fair bit narrower too. So while having two here at the back is comfortable, 
having someone sit here in the center, well, it's gonna be a bit of a tight squeeze from hip to hip. So, if you're gonna carry rear passengers in the Montero Sport, it's better to bring just two of them here and put down this very comfortable armrest, which is very softly padded. Speaking of the armrest, the cup holders are integrated here. Simply press it and out they go. Now with long trips in mind and all that, there's a fair bit of storage space here at the back of the Montero Sport. And what you have here is a sizable map pocket and you also get door bins on each side. Now the door bin, sure it's not the biggest out there, but it can easily hold a bottle. And again with long road trips in mind, there are three charging ports here at the back. Two USB and one socket. It's a 220 volt socket to be exact. So there is no excuse for you to run out of battery inside the Montero Sport. Well, at least your phone. Now, of course, a must have for any SUV is air conditioning for the back. And the Montero Sport is no exception. You even have controls mounted up here and you can even control the fan speed. Now the air vents, well, they're great. They're directly in front of you and all that. So you're not gonna feel warm at the back of a Montero Sport. However, the design of the vent does remind me of the L300 school buses I was riding in a lot when I was a kid. But that aside, well, it's pretty comfortable here at the back of the Montero Sport for as long as you don't have a third passenger sitting here in the middle. Of course, the reason why people buy these midsize SUVs is for the third row seating. So let's go check that out too. Now, typical in any midsize SUV, the third row seats of the Montero Sport are best reserved for children or short adults. Now, thankfully, there is a fair amount of knee room. I still have about this much. Of course, anyone taller than me is gonna start complaining, but at least you get a lot of light going into the cabin because these windows, well, they're fairly sizable, so you won't be claustrophobic in here. And also, you have air conditioning vents for each third row passenger. Also in the third row, you have a pair of cup holders, which are curiously just on one side, so that's on the right side only. And you also have an extra 12 volt socket here at the back. So, well, it's okay. However, what you don't have in the Montero Sport, in the third row at least, is foot room. So my foot is wedged right underneath the second row seats and you can't get more room out of it because these second row seats, well, they're fixed. So perhaps for the next generation, they can make like a sliding second row just to make the third row a little bit more, well, let's just say livable. So that's the third row covered. Let's head on and explore the cargo area. Now, like the two-wheel drive GT, the four-wheel drive Montero Sport GT also comes with a power tailgate. Now, some could mention that, well, it's a little bit on the slow side going up, but well, in the case of the Montero Sport, it's, well, it's not so bad. And anyway, now before we talk about the entire cargo area, I first wanna talk about these. Now, I've said it before and I'll say it again and I won't stop repeating it until Mitsubishi does something about it for the next generation. It's the stowing and the folding of the third row seats. So, there's no problem stowing them. All you have to do is pull this tab and pull this tab to fold them down. However, putting them back up again, well, that's a bit of a hassle because I have to pull the backrest like so, and I should somehow find a way to pull the seat bottoms, which are all the way at the backrest of the second row. And with someone like me who has short arms, that's a bit of a hassle. So I have to go all the way to the second row again and push it down myself, and then repeat the same process for the other seat. In an era where everyone has like a one pull solution, this is, well, this decidedly old school. So hopefully for the next generation, it comes with a one pull or one push solution. Okay, now we get to the subject of the cargo area and behind the third row, you have about 130 liters of space here, which is about the size of your typical small hatchback. So that's not so bad. Now we stow these out of the way. And behind the second row, you have about 1,150 liters of space behind this and that's pretty sizable. And if you fold it all the way to the second row, you have over 1,770 liters of cargo area going on here. 
Now, as impressive as that sounds, well, the Montero Sport actually has one of the smallest cargo areas in its class, mainly because it's the smallest in its segment. Well, it's pretty much limited by that. But still, who's going to complain with over 1,700 liters of total cargo space, right? Now, to make it totally flat, you have to tumble the seats forward and then fold those seat bottoms from the third row down to come up with a truly flat space. And putting them back is just as cumbersome as putting them down. Again, if Mitsubishi could do something about it for the next generation, that would be fantastic. Montero Sport 4x4 is saddled by extra weight and there are some compromises in terms of performance so it gets off the line just a little bit slower compared to the 4x2 models but that's not to say it's sluggish see it still packs a good punch and when you dig in your foot a little bit deeper in the accelerator this thing can fling off Passing maneuvers, overtaking, not much of a problem here in the Montero Sport but again because of that extra weight you will have to dig your foot a little bit deeper in the accelerator. But once the turbos have spooled, this thing, well, it's a pretty good and confident overtaker. And once you reach highway speeds, that 2.4 liter Myvec diesel, well, that's pretty quiet too for what it is. And what I noticed with the Myvec diesel is, well, it's pretty revvy for a diesel. Normally diesels, well, the moment you step on them, they lurch off the line. This one, it needs a little bit more revs. The four-wheel drive system does affect something that is rather important to people who buy SUVs like this, which is fuel economy. Now, from what I observed, it does about one kilometer per liter less compared to the 4x2 models. Now, around the city, the 4x2 can easily do about nine kilometers per liter, but this one, well, you're hovering at about seven to eight kilometers per liter. Now again, that's because of the extra weight and remember, the more weight a car has, the more effort it has to put in to move forward. So before you buy a 4x4 Montero Sport, ask yourself if you really need the four-wheel drive. If you do, well, get ready for that one kilometer per liter penalty. If not, you could stick to the 4x2 because that is, again, a bit more efficient. The 4x4 rides that little bit firmer compared to the 4x2. It's not totally harsh by any means, but you're gonna feel a bit more of the bumps when you're in the 4x4 compared to the 4x2. But at the same time, I noticed that the ride is still a bit on the wallowy side, but that also makes it feel a little bit more pliant here at the front. That's not the case in the Montero Sport. Now, body motions, well, again, the car floats a bit, but it's not alarming. So even at higher speeds, you don't have to worry about that. It still feels planted and stable and all that. Now, given that it is a 4x4 and it is an SUV after all, handling isn't going to be its well, top priority. And don't expect the Montero Sport to be a Canyon Carver. After all, it wasn't designed to be one. But all in all, despite the slightly heavy steering, well, you could say that it feels relatively planted but you have this feeling that you're sitting way up high so you have this feeling that oh i think it's gonna tip over and stuff like that but don't be afraid of that because well the seats well they're placed high and all that but the montero sport can handle it now the montero sport gt 4x4 also comes with adaptive cruise control so what it does is basically it follows the speed of the car in front now if he slows down we slow down he speeds up he speeds up and it also has the ability to come to a full stop just like the car in front and in situations like these now is a good time to demonstrate that so there are a few things about mitsubishi's adaptive cruise control so it'll tell you to step on the brake if the car in front has stopped 
I mean, it will stop on its own, but it'll just remind you that you should step on the brake pedal too. Now, it's much like the system you find in, say, the Ford Everest and stuff like that. So having that feature here in this range-topping Montero Sport GT is pretty neat. And if you're the kind of person who goes on a long drive, this is actually a savior. But for the most part, adaptive cruise control takes, well, the stress out of highway driving and even stop-and-go traffic. Now, another thing the Montero Sport has is rear cross-traffic alert. So if you find yourself parked nose in in any parking slot, it'll remind you of any cars, or motorcycles, tricycles, bicycles, and all that crossing behind you. So even if you look at the back, usually it's a blind spot there. This covers it for you. And of course, the Montero Sport also comes standard with traction and stability control. Although I did notice that on slippery surfaces, the traction control, well, a bit of a half step behind. So you step on it, you hear that wheel spin, but the traction control immediately cuts in to reel it all in. And of course, in cases of emergency maneuvers, stability control, well, that's a lifesaver. And I'm glad that it's standard in all variants of the Montero Sport. So what do we think? Well, the Mitsubishi Montero Sport 4x4 has everything we like about the other variants, but the addition of four-wheel drive means we can venture out further where we wouldn't dare go. Now granted, there are some compromises because of the four-wheel drive system, namely in fuel economy and performance, but what you get in return is a whole lot more features. Again, as I mentioned, the adaptive cruise control, the 360-degree view camera, the front camera, automatic emergency braking and whatnot, and even rear cross traffic alert. Now, onto the subject of price. Well, it starts at 2,450,000 pesos, which is a big ask in its segment because that price makes the Montero Sport four wheel drive GT the most expensive mid size SUV you can buy in the market today. Now, some will say it's worth it again because of all the added features, but others will say it's too high. Now for the value proposition, well, the jury's still out on that, but as a vehicle, well, the Montero Sport takes all the right boxes, and well, it's something ideally, but perhaps I'd stick with a two-wheel drive model because I'm not that adventurous. Now this has been Anton and Jess from AutoIndustria.com. If you enjoyed this review, do subscribe to our YouTube channel. While you're at it, like us on Facebook too, and also don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks for watching.